Hello everyone, welcome to the 8th topic. The title of our presentation is Created for Something Better. And we are going to talk about the 7th day Sabbath. I would like to just reiterate that the reason I am doing this is because I read in Matthew 13 verse 19 that those who don't understand the doctrines will be taken away by the enemy so I wanted to understand to review the doctrines for myself and if you will benefit by listening and being studying with me then that will be um, a better benefit for you so let us continue with our presentation with a prayer our father in heaven we ask that you forgive us from our sins be merciful to us lord please give us wisdom and understanding to study your word send the holy spirit lord to give us understanding thank you for hearing our prayers bless the listeners and the viewers in Jesus name we pray amen <clears throat> so Created for something better. There was a British biologist. He is a professor, a scientist. He was so in a hurry to go to his seminar. And he rode the taxi, the horse-drawn taxi. And he told the driver, you go as fast as you go as you you can so he drove as fast as he can very fast and then the scientist says do you know where you are going and the cab the driver said no your honor but i am driving as fast as i can <laughs> there are many people these days they are living a very fast life but do they know where they are going? Do they know where they are going? That is why the Bible, last book, Revelation 14, 7 says, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. Where are we going? To judgment. Okay? And worship Him. Who made heaven and earth and the sea and springs of water worship who we are going to worship the creator of everything so why does God want us to worship him isn't that like self uh, centered that is actually a great question because that is the opposite of God's character the reason why God wants us to worship him is because God created us and it is beneficial for us to worship him in fact God is so self uh, denying that he is God imagine and that he became a baby born in a manger with swaddling clothes and he was crucified for our sake he lived here on earth he did not care about money he lived so poorly so the character of jesus is actually so selfless he wants us everything that he does is for our benefit and everything that he asks us to do is for our benefit. How does he know? Because he created us. Philippians 2, 9-11 says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him, that's Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name. That, that name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of the father 
there is uh, another reason why the creator should be worshipped the idea that we should worship our creator is not a self-serving one it is because it is in our best interest for example when the scientist was traveling do, re do they really know <laughs> uh, is it beneficial to know where they are going it is right so we have it when we worship god it provides us direction in our lives it provides us a sense of where we came from how we came about where we are going and who we are and what we are supposed to do otherwise life is boring it's just money and fame and activities and then you die so what right everybody can do that but when we worship god we have a higher understanding of what we are here for <clears throat> so to remind us about that creatorship and our being a creature there is every week something that will remind us that we were created and this is the most largely forgotten idea so there in revelation 14 god says remember that we are created so let's look at this in psalm 33 8 and 9 it says let all the earth fear the lord let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him if you look at a car you wonder who made this car if you look at a computer who made this software if you look at a website who made this website and you respect those who create things but let me tell you my friend the lord created heaven and earth and let the world stand in awe of him for he spoke and it was done he commanded and it stood fast the word of god is so powerful in six days uh, probably you made your thesis or your dissertation in six months or two years or maybe five years or but god made the whole world in six days my friend wow genesis 1 27 says so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him are you proud that the god who created heaven and earth in six days also created us that is the reason we are worshiping because we want to acknowledge that we are created by the god who can create seven the whole world in seven or six days male and female he created them wow if you have a mercedes-benz or a bmw you are proud about the logo right or if you have a tesla or something something to be proud but if god makes something and that something can be a sign or you claim that you are made by god then we will be proud about that genesis 2 2 to 4 says and on the seventh day of creation god ended his work which he had done so and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done then god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which god had created and made genesis 2 2 to 4 what does God mean when he says he is sanctified? It means to be set apart for a holy use. So God did not say let there be food on the Sabbath. He said let there be food in previous days already. So the Sabbath is a special time set 
aside by God for a holy purpose dedicated to God okay but some people wonder uh, does it really matter which day in the week the Sabbath will be isn't one day the same as the other days okay check this illustration how about you getting married and then you are marrying one girl that has who has six other sisters and during the wedding day uh, it doesn't matter who they give in to you give to you as uh, anyway they are all sisters of course you won't like that right because you chose your bride you sanctified your bride you chose and set her aside for yourself so you want whatever you choose because you are the one who is going to choose so God took one of the seven days and dedicated it to himself that is the Sabbath and it is blessed and sanctified only God can make a day holy you can say I will keep the Sabbath on Wednesday or but the Sabbath is special because the one who created us made the Sabbath holy so let us continue without uh, acknowledging the, our creator our creator the world becomes confused they start to worship different idols which did not create anything we just created those idols and there is confusion but if we keep the sabbath we remember who created us and that we don't need to worship idols you know the israelites were miraculously delivered from the from egypt through crossing the sea that the waters were parted and that is god wanted to remind them that he loves them he doesn't want them to be slaves he wants them to be able to worship on the sabbath so in exodus 16 verse 4 to 5 4 and 5 it says behold i will rain bread from heaven for you because they ran out of uh, food in the wilderness and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that i might i may test them so this is a test remember every command of god is a test whether they will walk in my law or not whose law is this god's law and it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in so when are we going to prepare the food on the sixth day and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily how much food are we supposed to prepare on the sixth day double okay exodus 16 4 and 5 and the manna came it settled in the morning and it evaporated when the sun came out so they gathered it every morning every man according to his need and when the sun came hot it melted and so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much manna bread two omers for each person and exodus 16 21 to 23 says this is what the lord hath said tomorrow is a sabbath rest a holy sabbath to the lord bake that you will bake today and boil what you will boil today let me read that again i will paraphrase moses was saying this is what god says cook on friday and eat the remaining on the sabbath okay and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until the morning i i want to clarify what god is commanding the israelites 
God is simply commanding that they should not cook on the Sabbath. God provided the food, provided freedom, provided life, provided clothes, provided fire, provided clouds during the day if it's too hot, provided everything. God has only one command. Don't cook on the Sabbath. It is a test whether you will keep the commandments or not. That is in Exodus 16, 20. Even before the, God wrote down the Ten Commandments. So, then Moses said, Eat that day, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you should gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. So, even the angels who are sending the manna, did not send the manna on the Sabbath. Not because it's difficult to prepare manna, but because God said, keep the Sabbath. So even if God said by voice command, let there be food, he did not do it. He, it's not about convenience or amount of labor. It is about obeying. And the Lord said to Moses, how long? Will you, keep, will you refuse to keep my commandments? Why? Because most of the people did not, many of the people did not obey. They did not prepare on the sixth day, twice, and they tried to look for manna on the seventh day. So God was angry to Moses. How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? It's not Moses' law, it's God's law. See, Exodus, Exodus 16, 28-30. For the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So, the people rested on the seventh day. So, the reason God is testing his people is because he has higher and better dreams the reason your teacher is giving you a test is because they want to promote you the reason we are being tested with the sabbath is because god has higher plans for us a better plan for us exodus 19 5 and 6 now therefore if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant. Then you shall, you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So there is promotion. When you keep God's commandments, God will promote you. God will respect you. God will put you above everybody else. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel, according to Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Okay. This commandment reminds us of our relationship with God. He is our creator. In fact, because we are so forgetful, the fourth commandment starts in Exodus 8 and 11 with the word remember. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. It is not ours. It is not the government's. It is not your employer's. It is not the institutions. It is not even the church. Just property. The Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord our God. In it, you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates for in six days the lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that in them is and rested 
the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That is Exodus 20, 8 to 11, the fourth commandment. In the middle of the, in the center of the Ten Commandments, we see that God is the Creator. And He wants us to benefit from worshipping on the seventh day. In fact, there is another benefit of keeping the Sabbath day holy. In Isaiah 58, 13 and 14, If you turn not away your foot, from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holiday. Whose day is the Sabbath? Not even your family's. It's not yours. It is God's holiday. And call the Sabbath a delight. It's not make the Sabbath a delight. It is call the Sabbath a delight. The holy day of the Lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, nor speaking our own words. What is the benefit? Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. So not about our delight, not our own ways, not our own words, not our own pleasure, not our own travel, but delight yourself in the Lord. So let us read God's word Listen to his messages and sing praises to him on the Sabbath. Right? So, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath, this is another benefit. What will happen to everyone that keepeth the Sabbath? I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Who wants to go to God's mountain? Who wants to go to heaven? Who wants to go to the new heaven and new earth? Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath. Isaiah 56, 6 and 7. God will bring to his holy mountain and make them joyful in his house of prayer wow so god's laws have many benefits if we obey them for my house shall be called an house of prayer for all people of course it's the condition is there who want to keep the sabbath <clears throat> in fact even the sabbath existed from creation mark 2 27 says the sabbath was made for man and not man for the sabbath my friend are you a man are you human the sabbath is made for you <clears throat> it is the sabbath of the lord your god it is not ours, it is not the government's, it is not your employers, it is not even your churches. It is God's Sabbath, God's holy day. And Jesus also said that he is Lord of the Sabbath because resting on the seventh day in created him, we are worshipping him. In Revelation 1.10, the John the Revelator calls it the Lord's Day. <clears throat> Ezekiel 2020 has a nice uh, idea about the Sabbath. Hallow my Sabbath and they will be a sign between me and you. If we want to acknowledge God's creatorship, we want to be labeled as made by God. Keep the Sabbath. Because keeping the Sabbath is a sign between the Creator and the Creature, between God and us, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Keeping the Sabbath keeps us knowledge of our Creator. If we forget to keep the Sabbath, we will also forget God. 
because that's what the Bible says. Ezekiel 20, 20. In verse 12, it says, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me. You want to know who are God's people? Just check if they are keeping the Sabbath. That they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Do you want not to forget God? Keep the Sabbath. Do you want to be continuously sanctified? Keep the Sabbath. Ezekiel 20 verse 12. In fact, even in the future, when we reach heaven, when this earth is reformatted, Isaiah 66, 23 and 22 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, you shall, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me says the lord so from creation sabbath was there until the new heaven and a new earth sabbath is also there there is no break of keeping the sabbath it continues throughout time how about in the life of jesus in luke 4 16 it says he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and it as it, and as has his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So, if you want to follow Jesus, keep the Sabbath because Jesus kept the Sabbath. Luke four sixteen. <clears throat> if the Sabbath would have been changed, Jesus should have told the disciples to write it down somewhere. He must have told it to them directly, right? So because the Sabbath was never changed, Jesus never said about anything about changing the Sabbath. In fact, he was actually affirming that it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath in Matthew 12, 12. Is it good to heal on the Sabbath? Yes, because Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Did Jesus cook on the Sabbath? No, he picked up grain, but he did not cook on the Sabbath. So whatever Jesus did, we do. Whatever he did not do, we don't do. Very simple. Life is very simple. <clears throat> Luke 23, 54 and 56. And that day was the preparation day. And the Sabbath drew on. Then they returned. Why are we reading this? Because some people might say, Are you sure that the Sabbath in the Bible is still the seventh day in today's calendar? Okay, let's look in Luke 23. When did Jesus die? In the preparation day. That was Friday, right? And prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath according to the commandment. So, Jesus died on Friday. He rested on the Sabbath. And he rose on the sev uh, Sunday. Upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared because they had finished uh, embalming Jesus. But he was not there. He rose up already. Jesus Christ was crucified on Friday, rested on the Sabbath day, and rose up on Sunday. The whole world knows that. That's why we are sure that the Sabbath today is still the Sabbath during creation and 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> there is no doubt about that. We know when Jesus was crucified. Does Jesus still expect us to keep the Sabbath after he went to heaven already? Yes, because he told his disciples, pray that your flight may not be on the winter or on the Sabbath. That was a prophecy that was happening, supposed to happen 70 AD. Jesus expected the Christians when Jerusalem was attacked that they would still be keeping the Sabbath holy. <clears throat> How about 
the disciples after Jesus left? Let's see in Acts 17, 1 and 2. They came to Thessalonica. There was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul and his, as his customers, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned for with them from the Scriptures. The Gentiles begged that these words might be preached unto them the next Sabbath. So, there is so many instances that the disciples, even after Jesus left, were worshipping on the Sabbath. They were preaching on the Sabbath. On the next Sabbath, Acts 13, 42 and 44, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. So Paul actually, in the book of Acts, it records 84 meetings that Paul held on the seventh day. So before you conclude that there is no more Sabbath, that the Sabbath was transferred, it is beneficial to read from Genesis to Revelation, check all the uh, Sabbaths there. That's why this world really needs the Sabbath. We are tired of the whole week. The Sabbath reminds us that God is our creator, our provider, our savior, and our forgiver and our redeemer. How about in the last days? Revelation 14, 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The Sabbath, friends, is one of God's commandments. Furthermore, John 14, 15 says, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments and the sabbath is one of god's commandments so that is what is written in the bible about the sabbath jesus gave us jesus created us jesus redeemed us jesus forgave us from all our sins and Jesus can forgive us from all our sins. Jesus provided us with food, with family, with uh, health, with life, with money, opportunities, talents, time, energy, everything God has provided with love, with relatives, with friends. What else can you ask for? The question is, do we love God? Are we going to keep the Sabbath day holy? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for the rebuke and correction and information and truth regarding the Sabbath. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for forgiving us from our sins, for giving us the plan of redemption and future plans if we want to obey your laws and your commands help us to obey your laws and your commands send the holy spirit to convict us of our sins that we may repent please bless the viewers and the listeners in jesus name we pray amen